Hey, it's Sam here from Barn2 with a video about how to add a pricing formula to your WooCommerce products. If you're selling made-to-measure items where the price changes based on the materials used and the quantity ordered, then you need a pricing formula plugin, otherwise known as a measurement pricing calculator. This includes items such as fabrics, building materials, bespoke clothing, or anything where the customer needs to input their dimensions or measurements before placing their order. For example, a shop selling made-to-measure curtains could create a price formula that multiplies the desired length by the width and gives customers an accurate price for their order. This feature is just one of many within our WooCommerce product options plugin, and last time I made a video about it, you guys absolutely loved it. So this time, I'll go a little deeper into the kinds of complex price formulas that you can create, including a new option for conditional logic, where you can show or hide different pricing formulas depending on what the customer selects. To get this all up and running on your site, you'll need to install the WooCommerce product options plugin, which is linked below. That's what makes this whole process possible. There's no free trial, but as always, it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So you can try it out for yourself risk-free. After purchasing your copy, you'll get an email with the zip file and a product key for activation. In the WordPress admin, go to plugins, add new plugin, and upload the plugin zip file that you just downloaded. Click install and then activate. You'll need to enter your license key, which you can do in the first step of the setup wizard, or go to products, product options, and add your license key to the settings tab, and then you're all set. We're now ready to create our first pricing formula. I'm gonna use the example of a fabric shop selling different types of fabric priced per square meter. To do this, I've set up three products to represent three different styles or patterns. Then each product will offer three types of fabric, cotton, nylon, and polyester. Depending on what fabric the customer selects, there will be a different price formula working in the background to give them an accurate price. In the back end, we need to go to products, product options, and then create or edit a group. In this case, we have a group called fabric already, so let's see how the options are set up. So we can see there's a name, fabric, and the visibility, which you'll likely need to set as show on specific categories or products. Then you need to find the categories or products you want to apply it to. We can ignore the exclusions as we're just modifying a single category today. Then scroll down to the different option types. And now it's time for the fun bit because we need to add custom options. First, we need a way for customers to select the fabric type. Radio buttons or image buttons are probably best for this. Scroll down to choices and under labels, you need to write what the different options are and you can add new ones with this plus button here and you can remove them with the minus button. Here I've written the price as well because that will help the customer to understand how the price will be calculated in the end. So I've written cotton, nylon, and polyester, as well as their price per meter. Now I'm not gonna put anything in the pricing at this stage, because that's gonna be taken care of with the pricing formula later on. In order for the products to be able to be listed on WooCommerce, they do need a price. So I set up that base price as $10, and this is set up as the handling fee. $10 will always be added to every order, no matter the final quantity. So for example, Cotton is $50 per meter, but the final price will be $60 because it includes the $10 handling fee. I set up this price in the product screen when I created the products. Now this is important. For this option type, it needs to be a required option. Then you can save the changes, and that's all you need for that one. I'm going to close that option type. And next up, we have length and width, which are set up as number types. So I'll show you those now. So I wrote length as the name, and I set it as a number. Then under the label, we give it length in centimeters because we want our customers to be able to order a more precise amount than one or two meters. There's no cost to this as well, but this number type will be included in the formula later on. Again, this is a required field because we need to know how much the customer will order. The default value is 100 centimeters or one meter. The number type is whole number, and there's a minimum of 20 and a maximum of 10,000. 
This is optional, but I would recommend it. You don't have to set the same numbers here, but you should decide what's best for your store. Then we do the same thing with width. You can set it up. I've set up the maximum width of 200 because depending on what kind of fabric you're cutting from, you might not be able to create a thousand by thousand fabric uh, roll. You might only have two meters wide instead of some kind of infinite matrix of fabric. So everything else is the same. It's the width in centimeters. And I've just written a description, choose a width value between 100 and 200 centimeters. Again, it's required. And by the way, to create these advanced settings, you do need to save your changes first, and then you can enable this advanced settings option. Now we've set up three different similar pricing formulas where the numbers are just gonna be slightly different. So the first pricing formula is for cotton. So I'm gonna edit this option here, and we need to select price formula. Then we come down to the formula itself, and here's where the magic happens. This is the actual mathematical formula, which the plugin will use to calculate the price. So to begin with, I'm just going to remove this entirely so you can see what it, what it starts with. So first of all, it begins with length multiplied by width, and then we divide by 10,000. And the reason why we divide by 10,000 is because length and width are measured in centimeters, and we want to get a price that's based on square meters. So because length and width are in centimeters, we need to convert that into meters. So we do that with the, with the number 10,000 in this case. And then we need to multiply that by the price per meter, which is 50. Now, in order to help the plugin know what to multiply and divide first, we're going to add some brackets. So we're going to add a set of brackets to the length and to the width. And that way it'll multiply length by width first, then it'll divide by 10,000. Next, if we put the brackets on the outside of that whole equation there, and then we can multiply by 50 to get our final result. Now the price display suffix will be added to the price. So we can say it's the base price plus $50 per meter. So that'll be $10 plus $50 per meter in this case. And if we want to ignore the main product price and not include it, then we can tick this box here. Then again, save those changes. Come back down and enable this advanced settings mode here. And this is where we have our conditional logic. So the option is fabric type. That's the first option type we created. And our comparison is equals cotton. And that means that this formula will be applied only when the option is selected for cotton by the customer. We're going to close this option. And then you have this option to duplicate it. So you can click duplicate. And then you just have to change a couple of details to create your polyester and your nylon formulas. So for example, here, polyester is a slightly different price. So the price is going to be $30, not 50. And we're going to select the value as being the polyester option here. And you save those changes and do the same thing for the nylon, updating the price and the description as needed. Now, the most important thing is to test it out. So make sure you click on your product that you just modified and make sure that the math checks out. So cotton, nylon, and polyester, they should have their price plus the $10 base price added when you have one square meter, which is 100 by 100. But if, for example, I make it 200, that should double the price per meter. So that should give us $60 plus 10, and we have 70, that is our final price. So everything is working as intended. So that's an example of the price formula in action with conditional logic applied. Now let's take a look at a new example of how to use the price formula in tandem with other option types within the plugin. 
Say for example, you're a tailor and you offer customization to standard clothing items like this collared shirt. Here, the customer can first select their basic size. Then if they want any special customizations, they can select them using the checkboxes. And for each one that they apply, a new number field will appear to get their custom size. And using a price formula in the back end, the shirt price will update for them in real time. Let's take a look at the tailored shirt product options. So first of all, I set up radio buttons for the basic shirt size, and I added some different shirt sizes here, all as radio buttons, small, medium, large, XL, and 2XL. And if you wanted to, you could at this stage add a little bit of a fee for having larger sizes, for example, like $2 more. This one could be $1 more but you don't have to do that, that's optional. And you can also have one of the sizes pre-selected, but in this case, I'm not gonna do that. You have a description, please choose a basic size before adding the tailored options and set this as required because this is the base product that the customer will be ordering. Then we go to the customization options. This one is checkboxes. And the reason I'm using checkboxes is so they can select multiple different sizing options. Now I've only added two, but you could theoretically add as many as you like here. So I created a custom collar size and a custom sleeve length. These don't come with additional costs because we're going to work that out in the pricing formula in a second. I've also added a description. If selected, the price will increase based on the desired custom measurements. These are not required because they are completely optional customizations. Then I need to actually create a collar size number and a sleeve length number, just like our length and width before. So we're gonna set that up. I'm also adding a description to provide more information for the customer so they know where to start with their measurements. And under advanced settings, I'm creating a default value, a minimum and maximum value based on real shirt sizes. Finally, we're gonna use conditional logic to show this number if the custom collar size was selected in the earlier option. I've done the same thing for sleeve length, but of course I've updated the numbers and I've updated this to custom sleeve length. And finally, we have our pricing formula. Once again, choose price formula and make sure to use brackets accordingly. We're going to add the collar size plus the sleeve length and any other options that are selected, we can add into this one formula. Because we're using the add function, we don't have to worry about if the numbers are zero because anything plus zero is just that number. And then to keep things simple, I'm just taking the total length of all of the modifications and multiplying it by 0.1. If you increase the size of this number, you can get a much higher total price, but this is just a fair way of adding a little bit of extra price to the shirt and you can update this number to give yourself a little bit more profit based on the modifications. And don't forget to leave this unchecked for ignoring the main product price. We still want to have the main product price added even when this formula is applied. Save those changes. Now let's go back to our shirt here and refresh. And let's choose, actually let's choose the extra large option because that's gonna add $1. And then let's add a custom collar size. Let's make it mm, 31. And here the price is updated. When trying to write formulas, there are some common mistakes that are easy to avoid, but can be confusing if you don't know how things work. These are the most common reasons for a formula not working correctly. Number one, there's a mistake in the formula. Price formulas can be complex, especially if you're adding lots of parts to the equation. The plugin will tell you if a formula is invalid, but it won't tell you why. So check for stray brackets or incomplete formula operations, such as multiplying, but not multiplying by any particular number. If you're not confident with the math, then we recommend asking an expert to check this for you. Number two, the main product price is being added to the total. WooCommerce requires you to set a price for the product or variation, otherwise it will not be purchasable. You do this in the add or edit product page. Normally WooCommerce will add this to the total cost of the product, even if you're using a price formula field. You can stop this from happening 
by ticking the ignore main product price option here. But if you've taken this into account, then you don't need to select this checkbox as I've done. Or number three, you're using brackets incorrectly. Brackets can make or break a formula. So check these very carefully. Remember the parts of a formula within a bracket will be calculated first. So for example, length and width will be calculated before this divided by 10,000, which will be calculated before multiplying by 50. You can try your formula with simple numbers on a normal calculator first to see if everything looks right. If you need more assistance, you can always reach out to our amazing support team from our website. Click here to view the plugin demo. And to see what else you can do with WooCommerce product options, you can click on this video next. It has all the details you need. And as always, thanks for watching.